Hi guys! Welcome sa Engine Nerd Math Channel. Sa video na to ay tuturo ko sa inyo ang radicals. So kung gusto niyo itong matutunan, just keep on watching. Okay, so ano ba ang radicals? So define natin. Radicals. An expression consisting of a base raised to a rational or fractional exponents. So basically, kapag radicals, isa rin siyang exponential form. Kaso nga lang, ang keyword natin kapag radicals, meron tayong fractional exponent. So meaning, yung exponent natin ay fraction or rational number. For example, x raised to 1 half. So meron tayong base na x. And then, meron tayong exponent na fraction, which is 1 half. So far, yung exponent na kinoconsider pa lang natin sa series of videos ko about exponent ay integers. So, ngayon, kapag radicals na, fraction na siya. So, same as dito sa example na 16 raised to 1 fourth. So, base natin ay 16 at yung exponent natin ay 1 fourth. Okay. In general, we can transform a base raised to a fractional exponent using radical symbol. So, itong mga example ko, itong x raised to 1 half, 16 raised to 1 fourth, pwede daw natin silang i-transform using radical symbol. So, halimbawa, itong x raised to m raised to n. So, ang exponent niya ay m over n. So, pwede natin siyang i-transform into radical symbol. So, ito yung radical symbol, okay? Yung ganito. And then, para matransform itong x raised to m raised to n into radical symbol, syempre gagamit tayo ng radical symbol na to. Tapos, yung nasa loob ng radical symbol, siya yung kung ano yung base natin, which is yung x. And then, kung ano yung numerator ng exponent natin, which is m, magiging exponent yun noong base natin sa loob. So, magiging x raised to m. And then, yung denominator ng exponent natin, siya yung ilalagay natin dito sa gilid ng radical symbol. Siya yung tinatawag natin na index. Mamaya, i-define natin yon. So, it is one way of representing x raised to m over n. So, binabasa to as n root of x raised to m. Or, pwede rin ito. Itong m natin, pwede mong ilabas. Kaso, naka-enclose siya sa parenthesis. Sabihin, pwede mong i-distribute yung m dito sa loob. Okay? Same as dito sa y raised to 2 third. So, ganun uli, gamit ka uli ng radical symbol. And then, yung base mo na y nasa loob. Yung numerator nung exponent natin, siya yung magiging exponent ng y sa loob. And then, ito yung denominator, siya yung magiging index o yung number sa gilid nung radical symbol. Okay? Now, let's have the definition of nth root of a number. So, y is the nth root of x if y raised to n is equal to x where n must be a natural number greater than 1. So, halimbawa, itong expression na to, binabasa natin yan as cube root of 8 is 2 since 2 raised to the third power is equal to 8. So, basically, ang definition ng nth root of a number ay siya yung base kung saan Kapag ni-raise natin yung base na yon doon sa n, kasi nga n root, equal siya doon sa number. So, halimbawa, y raised to n is equal to x. So, y is the n root of x. Or, dito sa example natin, 2 is the cube root of 8, kasi yung 2, siya yung base kung saan, pag ni-raise natin doon sa n natin, which is 3, or cube root, ang sagot ay yung power na so, yun yung definition ng nth root of a number. Same as dito sa fifth root of negative 32 is negative 2. Kasi yung negative 2, siya yung base kung saan kapag nerase natin sa index na 5 o yung fifth root, yung negative 2 equal siya sa negative 32. Kasi negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 32. So, dito sa expression natin, let's say cube root of 8 is equal to 2, itong 3, siya yung tinatawag natin na index. Okay? Itong 8, siya yung radicand, o yung number na nasa loob ng radical symbol. 
Okay? And then, itong 2, siya yung nth root. Okay? So, meron tayong special case kung saan hindi natin nilalagyan ng index yung radical. So, halimbawa, square root of 4 is 2. So, dito, napansin nyo, meron tayong radicand, o yung number na nasolve ng radical symbol na 4, tapos yung square root natin ay yung 2. Napansin nyo, wala tayong index dito sa gilid. Pag ganun, automatic ang index natin doon ay 2. So, hindi na natin sinusulat kapag 2. So, pwede na natin i-delete. Ibig sabihin, automatic yon na square root of 4 is equal to 2. Okay? So, meron tayong note when we are considering the nth root of a number. So, sabi, when you have an even nth root, the radicand must be non-negative. Otherwise, the expression will be undefined or will have imaginary number i. So, ibig sabihin, kapag daw meron kang even index, dapat yung radicand ay yung number na nasa loob ng radical symbol ay dapat non-negative or laging positive. Kasi ang magiging sagot mo kapag ganon ay undefined kapag negative yung radicand. Tapos meron kang even index. Kasi wala naman tayong uh, power kung saan ang base mo kapag nerase mo sa even exponent ay magiging negative. So dapat laging positive, right? For example, base natin na 2, raise to even exponent na 2, so positive 4, right? Same as kung negative 2, raise natin sa exponent na even pa rin na 4. Diba? Positive 16 pa rin yan. So, laging positive ang power kapag ang exponent natin ay even. So, halimbawa, square root of negative 4 is undefined. Kasi according to sa note, meron tayong even index which is the invisible to nga kanina. Sabi ko, kapag walang nakalagay, automatic to yun, diba? And then, yung radicand natin, yung number inside the radical symbol ay negative. So, undefined siya kasi base dito sa note natin na to. Kasi nga, hindi mo naman masasabi na square root of negative 4 is 2. Kasi, may contradiction. Kasi, ito yun, diba? Kung 2 siya, dapat 2 raised to 2 is equal to positive 4 and not negative 4. Kung negative 2 naman, so, if negative 2 naman yung kukonsin natin na answer, erase mo siya sa index na 2, which is still positive 4, not negative 4. So, therefore, wala tayong answer sa square root of negative 4 or undefined. So, meron tayong ginagamit na imaginary number kung meron tayong radical na undefined or yung index natin ay even tapos yung radical natin ay negative. So, ang ginawa lang natin dito, pwede natin i-factor yung fo negative 4 as 4 times negative 1. And then, may property tayo sa radical na kapag nakamultiply yung radical natin, pwede natin silang paghiwalayin. So, magiging square root of 2 times square root of negative 1. Tapos, itong square root of 4, di ba positive to siya? Tapos, itong square root of negative 1, meron tayong tinatawag na imaginary i. So, square root of negative 1 is equal to i. So, therefore, 2 times i. So, square root of negative 4 is 2i, which is undefined kasi meron na tayong imaginary number. Okay? So, yun yung take note natin kapag even nth root tapos yung radical natin ay negative. Kapag add naman na nth root o yung n natin o index natin ay add number, wala tayong problema. Hindi tayo magkakaroon ng imaginary. So, alambawa, cube root of negative 8. So, negative to siya kasi negative 2 raised to 3 is negative 8. So, therefore, wala tayong problema kapag ang index natin ay add and then yung radical natin ay either positive or negative. Doon lang kapag even yung index natin. Tapos, negative yung radical. Okay? Okay, so now let's solve some examples. So, find the indicated roots. So, number 1, we have square root of 25. So, the answer is 5, right? Since 5 yung base kung saan kapag nerase mo sa index na 2, ang sagot ay yung radicand na 25. Okay? Next, cube root of negative 27 equals negative 3, right? Since negative 3 raised to the index 3 is equal to negative 27. Okay? Next, we have fourth root of 625. So, the answer is... 5 pa rin. Since 5 raised to the index of 4 is equal to the radicand 625. Okay? Next, 
square root of 64 over 121. So, what is the answer? Equal to 8 over 11, right? Since 8 over 11 raised to the index, which is 2, is equal to the radicand na 64 over 121. Okay? Next, we have 4th root of negative 16. Okay, napansin nyo, yung index natin ay even, and then yung radicand natin ay negative. So, sabi natin kanina sa note, kapag ganito yung case, ang sagot natin dyan ay undefined. Or magkakaroon tayo ng imaginary number. Okay? Next, we have write each of the following with rational exponent. So, apply natin yung concept na x raised to m over n is equal to n root of x raised to m. Okay, so, di ba equal din to sa n root of x quantity raised to m. So, dito sa example 1, so parang ito yung form niya. So, parang ang radicand natin o yung nasa loob ng radical symbol, siya yung base. So, 9ab raised to yung index, siya yung denominator, so siya yung n, tapos yung 4, siya yung numerator o siya yung m. So, 9ab quantity raised to 4 thirds. Okay? Next, we have Fifth root of AB squared C. So, ito yung radicand. So, copy natin. Siya yung base. And then, itong 5, siya yung denominator. And then, automatic, dahil wala tayong exponent dito sa AB squared C quantity, nakarish lang yan sa 1. So, parang 1 yung numerator natin. So, AB squared C raised to 1 fifth. Okay. Next, we have 9A. 5th root of b squared. So, itong 9a, parang naka-multiply lang siya. So, copy lang yan. Then, dito tayo magta-transform into fractional exponent. So, so ang radicand natin ay yung letter b. And then, yung exponent niya ay 2. So, siya yung m o numerator. Over yung index natin na 5 na n or siya yung denominator. So, 9a times b raised to 2 fifths. Okay? Next, we have square root of square root of 4. So, Pwede natin i-transform mo na itong innermost. So, ito ay equal saan? Sa 4 raised to, diba, to to, and then yung exponent ng 4 ay 1. So, 1 half. And then, naka-square root pa. So, ngayon, ito na yung pinaka-base natin, o yung pinaka-radicant. So, 4 raised to 1 half, and then naka-exponent niya, and then ang exponent niyan ay 1, diba, automatic. So, ang numerator natin para sa fractional exponent ay 1 over Itong index natin ay 2 pa rin, yung invisible 2. So, siya yung denominator. So, therefore, 4 raised to 1 half, raised to 1 half. Okay? Next, we have 5th root of 4x cubed, square root of 3y. So, ito lagi tayong sisimula sa loob. So, itong 4x cubed, copy lang natin. And then, itong square root of 3y, pwede natin i-transform into fractional exponent. So, itong 3y, siya yung base. So, 3y raised to 2 yung index natin. So, siya yung denominator. And then, itong 3y quantity naka-raise sa 1. So, 1 lang. Okay? And then, punta tayo sa radical symbol na may index na 5. So, automatic, itong buong quantity na to, di ba, naka-raise lang yun sa 1. So, siya yung magiging numerator. So, parang 1 over, and then yung index natin na 5 na dapat nasa denominator. So, ito yung expression niya with rational exponents. Okay? Okay, next. Write each of the following in radical form. So, baliktad naman. So, ngayon, meron tayong expression na may fractional exponent. Then, itatransform natin into radical symbol. So, first example, 5 raised to 2 thirds. So, radical symbol... And then, itong base, siya yung radicand, yung number na nasa loob ng radical symbol. Itong 2, siya yung magiging exponent ng base na 5, so 5 squared. And then, itong 3, siya yung index, so nasa gilid ng radical symbol. Okay, so cube root of 5 squared. Next, a cube, b cube, quantity raised to 1 fourth. Okay, so radical symbol, itong a cube, b cube, siya yung pinaka-radicand sa loob. And then, itong 4, siya yung index, so nasa gilid ng radical symbol. So, sa sulat natin dito, sa gilid ay 4. And then, itong 1, siya yung exponent ng 
radical na a cube b cube which is 1. So, kahit hindi na natin sulat, automatic may exponent naman niya na 1. Okay, next. 35 raised to 0 0.25. So, napansin nyo, decimal yung exponent. Pero, pwede natin yan i-convert into fraction, right? So, 0 0.25 is the same as 1 fourth, right? So, ngayon, pwede na natin i-convert into radical symbol. So, radical symbol, and then itong 35, siya yung radicand. Itong numerator na 1 sa exponent, siya yung exponent ng 35. Tapos itong 4, siya yung index. So, 4th root of 35. Okay? So, pwede natin itong i-delete. Okay, next. Negative 4. Quantity A plus P raised to 12. Quantity raised to 1 third. So, ganun pa rin. Itong nasa loob, siya yung pinaka-base natin. So, nasa loob to lahat ng radical symbol. So, siya yung radical. Negative 4. A plus B raised to 12. And then, itong 1, siya yung pinaka-exponent ng radikan sa loob. So, parang raised to 1. Okay? Pero kahit hindi natin isulat kasi 1 naman. Okay? And then, itong denominator na 3, siya yung index. So, sa gilid natin isulat. So, cube root. Okay? Cube root of negative 4, quantity A plus B raised to 12. Okay, next we have x squared raised to 1 over n times y cube raised to 2 over n. So, meron tayong dalawang base. And then, pero silang merong index na n. Kasi yun yung denominator. So, pwede nating ilabas muna yung 1 over n. So, parang x squared y cube. Okay? Tapos, itong x squared 1 lang. And then, itong y cube. Meron tayong 2 na exponent, ba? Tapos, tsaka natin ilalabas yung pinaka fractional exponent na 1 over n. Kasi pwede natin apply yung distributive kapag law of exponent, di ba? Pwede natin i-distribute to dito. So, mamumultiply sila. So, same lang. So, therefore, ito na yung pinaka-radical natin. So, sulat tayo ng radical symbol. So, x squared y cube raised to 2. Itong 1, di ko na sinulat. So, x squared na lang. Kasi 1 lang naman yun. And then, itong 1, siya yung pinaka-numerator ng radical natin. So, ganyan. Kaso, dahil 1 naman, kahit hindi na natin isulat. Tapos, itong n, siya yung index. So, susulat natin siya sa gilid. So, n root of x squared times y cube raised to 2. Okay? So, that is the topic, radical. So, sana ay may natutunan kayo sa video na to at maraming salamat sa panunood.